So, let's look at the other side of this ultimate matchup. Levan Sagnishvili vs Devon Lorette at King of the Table 4, quite likely the highest level of arm wrestling that exists today. The one who wins will almost undoubtedly be known as, if not the greatest, then at least the current best and or strongest arm wrestler in the world. We've covered a few reasons that Devon might slip and lose, so now it's Levan's turn. What exactly could stop this 400 pound beast from the east? He has remained at the top for the last few years, but during them he has never fought Devon Larat, and especially not the current package that Larat has pieced together through his mysterious methods. Levan is heavy, roughly 100 pounds heavier than Devon. This gives him theoretical strength advantages, but it also brings some issues. A heavier person is very likely to be slower, and against someone as cunning and tactically savage as Devon Larat, every microsecond counts. There's a very high chance that if Levan is not able to pin Devon right away, he will be held and studied, and at any slight possibility for an attack, Devon will rush in and take advantage. Most of the table footage we've seen of Levin recently have been training sessions, none of them have been against Devon Larat, and none of them that I've seen have been fast. That's not to say that Levin is not capable of speed, but the majority of his pins in the past have been more dependent on his brute strength and ability to hold, and he's gotten heavier since then, so if he isn't fast enough, there's a really dangerous risk that Devon will sneak in and cut through that strength. Combine the fact that he is so heavy with the heavy duty pancakes he has consumed to get that heavy, and Levan's ability to keep that strength and power active for very long becomes very questionable. In his videos with Alexei Tarokti, when asked about cardio, Levan said he didn't do much. Obviously this is old footage and purely speculation, but if that mindset still holds true, combined with his massive frame and how he quite quickly gassed out and lost power in his training session against Irakli and the others, it seems possible that a long match is very much not where he wants to be. And as we all know, endurance is the buzzword surrounding Devon. We've seen him spending hours straight on the table against multiple hands and arms, so if the van is not able to shut him off ASAP, the tide quite possibly flows more and more into Devon's favour. The second point is age. Now, some people will say that youth is an asset in sport, that younger people have more energy and speed than the older, which is true. Speed ability declines as a person gets older and strength becomes harder to gain. But arm wrestling is quite a unique sport, especially the supermatch style that King of the Table will ultimately be. The burden is not so much on muscles, the majority of the battle is decided by the tendons. And we know that most of the best arm wrestlers, again especially in the supermatch format, are not young. Tendons take a very long time to strengthen, and old man strength is a very real thing. Devon has been working away at strengthening those tendons for at least 23 years, given that his first international competition was in Japan in 1999, where he lost to John Brzenk, which says quite a lot about his ability in that competition. Levan has been in the sport for less time, with his first recorded international competition in 2013 at the WAF Worlds in Poland. So that alone gives Devon 14 more years of competition at an international level, and 14 years learning, analysing, growing and strengthening the crucial tendons. Even with the most extreme pancakes, Levan cannot make up for this time difference, so clearly Devon has the time and experience and quite possibly the tendon maturity to hold him at bay. And the final point, although there are undoubtedly others, is nerves. Levan is younger, and he was probably not expecting the waves of criticism and general chaos that has been born from this match becoming a thing. He may be mentally as strong as he is physically, but there is a real risk that all of these comments and even the mind games that Devon has and may continue to deploy may eat away at him. This could manifest in a few ways. He might lose sleep leading up to the match. This could leave him fatigued and less ready on the day itself. And if Devon is able to wriggle his way into that heavy skull, doubts and confusion may very well cloud his thoughts and ability to act on the day he needs them the most. And his actions may be disturbed and delayed at just the wrong moment, opening up a gateway for Devon to march through and topple the startled giant. Whatever way this mega match goes down, history will be made in the sport. A new champion will emerge above all of the rest, leaving some overjoyed and some devastated. But the real victory will go to the sport and its future as a viable business that people will see reason to invest in and grow further, giving us even more matches like this. Maybe we'll get to the 400 pound Mega Devon versus an 800 pound fused monster called Levin Siplenkov. That would certainly be an interesting possibility. But until then we can only wait for the match to happen. This Saturday the 25th of June, the future of the sport will be decided. And the aftermath will be wonderful. I'll see you later. 